On today's episode of Project 380, I'm going to be installing my bucket seats and some safety equipment. So today I'm going to be installing my bucket seats with some fixed bucket seat mounts from Skid Nation, some Takata 6 point harnesses and a fire extinguisher. But before I install all of these I'm going to talk to you about why you need them. First of all if you're only using your MX-5 as a daily driver you're probably not going to need any of these apart from maybe the fire extinguisher. So first off is the bucket seat. You're going to want one of these if you're going to the track maybe a drift event or some autocross. A true fixed back bucket seat like what I've got, which is the Sparco Sprints, is designed to keep the driver fixed into the car. It's got high side bolsters and shoulder bolsters to keep the driver from moving around when cornering aggressively. I'm using the Sparco Sprints as they're quite a common choice for the MX-5 owners, and I've had them for years already. Now these can be mounted to the standard Mark II rails with a little bit of modification and that's how I've had it for years but I am now going to be changing to the Skid Nation fixed rail system. This is going to allow me to get my seat a little bit lower and where I need it to be and it's going to be completely fixed. It's never going to be able to move unless I unbolt it. These come in two different options for people over 177cm and under 177cm. I am exactly 177 centimeters, so I've gone for the taller option. Now onto the harnesses. Unless you've got a roll cage or a half cage, it's advised not to fit harnesses. In the case of a forward facing incident, the standard seat belts allow the occupants of the car to be thrown slightly forward and out the way of danger. But the whole point of the harnesses is to keep the occupants nice, tight, rigid into the seat so you're not thrown about which in the case of an instant is not going to allow you to get your head out of harm's way. And that is when the roll cage or half cage comes into play. That is designed to be there to keep your head and shoulders out of harm's way. So I have gone for a set of Takata six point harnesses for a couple of reasons. One, I've already got a half cage in, so I'm good to use harnesses and a bucket seat. Two, I've gone for the six point option to stop something called submarinum, which is quite common in older four point harnesses. Where in the case of a forward facing incident, because there's only four points of contact, you can slide down into the seat and potentially choke yourself. I've gone for the three inch option, which I do prefer a thicker belt, and I just like the color. You do also have to be careful about having harnesses in your car on the road in certain countries, so it's best to check the law first. To make the installation of the harnesses possible, I've also got some harness eye bolts and some spreader plates. You won't necessarily need these items if you've got a Mark 1 and you're fitting four point harnesses, but I'll cover that in a little while. You are, however, gonna require these if you're using a Mark 2 and whichever Mark you're using if you're gonna fit six points. So last thing on the list is the fire extinguisher. Whether it's a track car, drift car, or it's a daily driver, probably a good idea to have one of these anyway. And to fix this into the car, I've got the Skid Nation fire extinguisher bracket, which fits onto the seat rails. So to fit all of these, we first need to get our original seats out of the car. I've already done that, and if you want to know how, I've also done a video on removing all of that. So go check the link up above. So as you can see, I've already fitted the passenger seat and harnesses. That was my little practice run before filming. But now onto the driver's side and to do that we're going to start off with the harness eyes and we need to get underneath the carpet to do that. So the first harness eye bolt I'm going to do is the transmission tunnel one. At the, If you've got a Mark 1 you're already lucky enough to have this hole. This is where one of the seat rails already bolts onto. But because I've got the Mark 2 I've already welded a spreader plate inside the transmission tunnel. All I've got to do is screw in my harness eye. Now for the fifth and sixth point of the harness. This is where it gets a little bit tricky in the MX-5. 
as you want it sort of close to the center and you need it just behind your chest line. Now the placement of these is a little bit difficult as you've actually got the chassis rail running down the middle here. So you need to go either side of the chassis rail and you need to be able to clear the fuel lines and the brake lines on this side. So for the fifth or sixth point, whichever one you would class this as, I have gone as close to the transmission tunnel as I can. I've drilled the hole and welded in the spreader plate. And this side I've actually gone where there once was a water drain. I've welded in a plate underneath and then welded the spreader plate underneath. Now for the third or fourth point, which is gonna to have to go down here. I'm actually gonna use the stock seatbelt point down here. And to do that, I have got a harness eye, which is 7 16th UNF, which goes straight into the stock threaded hole. I am actually gonna be keeping my stock seatbelt in, so I need to disassemble the bottom part of it and replace the bolt with the harness eye. So to do that, I'm gonna first twist off the plastic lock ring, then the hat spacer, big washer, another spacer, and then slip the bolt out. Then I'm gonna put the new harness eye in, but before I do that, I'm gonna place a washer on it, place it into the stock seat belt, and then put the rest back on in the reverse order. But before screwing that one in, the carpet needs to go back down. Now you can screw it into the original seatbelt hole. Now is as good as time as any to put in the fifth and sixth point of the harness so you're not struggling when the seat is in and fiddling about trying to get it hooked up. So now onto the bucket seats. There's a few things to consider when purchasing yourself a bucket seat for the MX-5. Number one, are you gonna want a rigid back bucket seat like this or a reclining bucket seat? Number two, how are you gonna mount the seat into the car? Some seats come with bottom mounts, some seats come with side mounts. Sparco Sprint has both side and bottom mounts. Number three, are you gonna use a fifth and sixth point in your harness? If so, you need a bucket seat with a hole in between the crotch. Number four, make sure you choose a seat that fits in your car. Unfortunately, the MX-5 is quite limited to space. I've ran into issues with other seats where the shoulder bolsters will hit onto the doors and you won't be able to close the doors. Number five, you've got to consider whether you are gonna fit in the seat. You don't want a seat that's too big, so you're gonna be slopping around in the seat, and you don't want a seat that you can't fit in. And lastly, you need to pick a color. The Sparco Sprints seem to be a very common choice in the MX-5 owners, as they do fit really well. And you've got clearance at the shoulder bolsters. So now it's time to fit the new rails and fit the bucket seat into the car. Now I'm ready to put the new Skid Nation rails onto the side of the seat. But before I do that, if you are keeping the stock seat belt buckles, you are gonna need to put them in before you bolt these to the seat. And they're using one of these two holes here. So I've already had a play with the passenger side and I know I need to use this hole. So I'm gonna start off by putting an M10 bolt from the inside out. Then I'm gonna use a couple of washers to space the buckle out so it doesn't foul on the seat. Then the standard buckle could go on. And then a washer and a nylock nut. It's a really good idea to use a nylock nut as you really don't want this to ever come loose. Now it's a good idea to tighten this up before you put it on the seat and in the car as it's gonna be a bit difficult to get to the back of the nut. You will have to play about with this position a little bit as it's gonna vary from seat to seat, but I know I need it about the half 11 position.
Now for the seat positioning. As you can see, these can fit in many different ways and configurations, but I've already tested this and I know where I want it. But I'll go over seat and position in just a little while. For now, I know I need the lowest rail and the second from the front hole. So bolt in from the other side, put some spacer washers and screw it into the seat. Now since the front is still loose, we can lift the back up, pop the bolt in and put the spacer washers in easily before bolting it into the seat. Now the other side is just the same, just without the spacer washers in between the rail and the seat. Now it's time to put the seat in the car. Now the front bolts are done, it's time for the back bolts. Now this is gonna vary whether you're shorter than 177 centimeters or taller, all depending how far back you've got your seat. As you can see, I've got a good bit of room between my seat and my rear bulkhead. So I'm gonna be able to get my hand right down the back here and do up the last two bolts. But if you are taller than 177 centimeters and the seat is all the way to the back, you are going to have to try and get your hand right underneath the seat and right at the back there unless your hand is skinny enough to fit down here so i'm not going to film putting those bolts in as it's going to be pretty much impossible to film and also i'm not putting those bolts in just now as the seats believe it or not are going to be coming back out again i needed them in at this particular time as I needed to weld in the spreader plates before I do anything else underneath the car. So now it's on to the fire extinguisher. And I've purchased this bracket from Skid Nation. This is designed with these two holes to go in between the seat rail, using the bolts that hold the seat rail to the chassis. This bracket has got three slotted holes, so pretty much whatever fire extinguisher you pick up is gonna fit. So I've picked up a one kilo fire extinguisher it's nice and light and it comes with a mountain bracket, perfect for the rail that I've got. So when you're on the Skid Nation website choosing your fire extinguisher, there is a choice of two options, left hand or right hand. I've gone for the left hand option, which is my passenger side. Now it doesn't matter what country you're from, left hand and right hand are both the same. As on all models, the left hand side, because of the transmission tunnel, actually narrows towards the front of the seat and the seat mount and bolt holes are closer together. So now all I've got to do is bolt the mount and for the fire extinguisher onto the bracket and into the car. So I've gone ahead and taken out the original seat rail bolts and I'm gonna replace it with a slightly longer bolt. So what I need to do is place the fire extinguisher bracket on top of the rails and bolt it down. Now onto the harnesses. I'm gonna start off by reaching underneath and grabbing point number five and six and feeding them through the crotch hole. And for point four and three, I'm gonna feed them through the holes in the side. and then take the quick release end and hook it onto the harness eye. Now for the shoulder harnesses. For this, you are gonna want a harness bar or a roll cage or a half cage with a harness bar welded into it. You don't want to use the harness eyes back here as it's not strong enough and you don't want the harnesses to be bolted to the seat rails as the harnesses won't do the job they're designed to do. So I'm going to start off by feeding the harness through the seat. 
So the setup of wrapping the harness around the harness bar is going to differ or depend on what harness and buckle system you've got. I've got Takata harnesses with a free bar buckle system. So the harness that has gone through the back of the seat needs to be fed up through the buckle to where you need it to be. Down through the back of the buckle. Underneath the harness bar. Up through the back of the buckle. Then through the front of the buckle. Pull all the excess nice and tight. And then through the back of the buckle to lock it all off. Now with the excess of the harness, I'm simply gonna roll it up nice and tight. Now with a tie wrap, I'm just gonna feed that through the center of the roll. And just tighten that a little and tuck it out of the way. Now setting up your harness is going to take a little bit of time, trying different positions and different lengths. What I'd suggest is get a friend to help you, so if you sit in the seat and get them to tighten up the straps, instead of you trying to move, bend over and tighten the straps, because once you move back, the strap is probably going to be loose again. So how I'll set it up is the bottom points of the harness are tight where I need them, and the top has got a bit of slack so that I could get everything buckled up nice and easily and once I'm in the car I could just pull and tighten myself in. So the aim of the harness is to keep you nice and tight in the seat and especially in the case of a forward facing instant you can't move too far forward. And the fifth and sixth point are going to stop me sliding down into the seat. Also going to want to practice getting in and out of the harness to make it quicker and easier for yourself. Luckily, with these, it's a quick release and everything comes loose pretty quick. You also want to practice where you want to put the harness once you're getting out. To try not scratch any of the paintwork on the outside of the car or anything on the inside of the car. Another thing you're going to want to practice is getting this harness off nice and quick and being able to reach your fire extinguisher. And now for the seat positioning. You don't want the seat all the way back like I used to have it, and you're stretching for the pedals, what you actually want is to make sure you can fully depress all the pedals and not lock your knees out. And the same for the steering wheel. You don't want to be stretching out for that steering wheel. You want it so that when you're turning, you're not going to be locking your arms out and reaching for it. So that's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, or if it helped you install your harnesses or bucket seats, leave it down in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.